everybody. Today's practice problem comes from Essentials of Economics by Paul Krugman, Robin Wells, and Catherine Grady. We're going to be working with the second edition, and we're going to be doing chapter three, problem number eight. The question begins by showing a demand schedule for what the question is referring to as a normal good. So just as a reminder, a demand schedule is basically the set of points that ultimately go to plot a demand curve. But a demand schedule is just a table of price and quantity demanded pairs like we see here. And we were told that we were looking at a normal good, so it's worth reviewing what a normal good is. So when we talk about normal goods, what we're actually referring to is how the good behaves in response to changes in consumers' income. And we can say that if we have a normal good, these are the goods that we usually tend to think about, that when consumers' income goes up, the demand for those goods goes up. And conversely, when consumers' income goes down, the demand for those goods goes down. Now, this doesn't exactly seem groundbreaking, but the reason we have a name for this is because actually not all goods behave in this way. That we can, in addition, define what we call an inferior good. And an inferior good is just one that shows the opposite behavior. That actually, when consumers' income goes up, demand for inferior goods goes down, and conversely, when consumers' income goes down, demand for those goods goes up. So you can see, roughly speaking, companies that produce inferior goods tend to be those who do kind of well during recessions because consumers feel like their incomes are going down and they actually end up buying more of inferior goods and less of normal goods. But nonetheless, we have these definitions in mind so that we can actually answer the questions that are being asked. So again, back to this demand schedule. Part A of the question asks, do you think that the increase in quantity demanded, say from 90 to 110 in the table, when price decreases, say from 21 to 19, is due to a rise in consumers' income? You know, explain why or why not. Well, let's think about what the demand schedule actually means. The demand schedule gives the relationship between price and quantity demanded all else being equal, right? That this traces out one demand curve. You know, if I were to make a demand curve, I would just be plotting these four points and connecting the dots. Because we're saying that this is the relationship between price and quantity demanded, all else being equal, that implies that we're not actually changing the consumer's income as we go from one price to another. That we're just saying holding income constant, what is the effect of only a change in price of the good on how much of the good the consumer wants? That said, because normally we'd say, well, when we have a change of income, we're not just moving to another point on the demand curve that we're shifting the demand curve entirely, right? Because income is a non-price determinant of demand. That said, I'll just make an argument to you here. What we're actually gonna see when we start talking about consumer choice and utility maximization is that when the price of a good goes down, consumer's purchasing power tends to increase. And they tend to feel richer, right? So in a way, we can say, well, this price decrease actually increases purchasing power, et cetera. But it's still not a literal change in income, right? So knowing that this is a normal good doesn't really do anything to explain why we're seeing this behavior. That this behavior is just our downward sloping demand curve, which is just a result of the law of demand, which states that price and quantity demanded move in opposite directions. Part B of the question says, now suppose that the good is an inferior good. So now the good is behaving like this here. Okay. It says, would the demand schedule still be valid for an inferior good? Well, again, we said that our demand schedule was the relationship between price and quantity demanded, where the changes in quantity demanded 
were specifically caused by the change in price, and we were holding everything else constant. So there's no reason to believe that this demand schedule couldn't also be relevant for an inferior good, right? An easier way to put that is just to remember that both normal and inferior goods tend to face downward sloping demand curves. That there's one small exception to that. Not a lot of examples are found in practice, but we could have what's called a Giffen good that actually has an upward sloping demand curve. And Giffen goods are goods that are very, very, very inferior. But that doesn't change the fact that the vast majority of both of these types of goods have downward sloping demand curves. So just by looking at this and seeing that we have a downward sloping demand curve doesn't actually give us any information as to whether the good is a normal good or an inferior good. Part C of the question says, lastly, assume you don't know whether the good is normal or inferior. Because from this information here, that's a reasonable statement to make because we can't tell from here whether a good is normal or inferior. So devise an experiment that would allow you to determine which one it was. So we can think creatively about what we might want to do in this scenario. And we can start by thinking about what we actually know about the behavior of supply and demand that could differentiate a normal good from an inferior good. So here I drew some pictures for you to sort of illustrate this concept here. That we could say, we're going to see an increase in demand if we have an increase in consumer's income and we have a normal good, or if we have a decrease in consumer's income and we're looking at an inferior good. On the other hand, we're going to see a decrease in demand or a shift to the left of demand if we have a decrease in income and we're dealing with a normal good, or if we have an increase in income and we're dealing with an inferior good. So this would suggest that if we could somehow do something to move consumers' incomes up or down, we could then observe the resulting changes in quantity demanded to try to figure out whether we're dealing with a normal good or an inferior good. Specifically, we could say, well, let's just say we're going to hold the price of our good constant at some level P, right? And then we're going to change consumer's income. Let's say we increase consumer's income. Well, if we increase consumer's income and don't change the price of our good, we could just observe, do we get an increase in demand or do we get a decrease in demand? And that reaction is actually going to tell us whether we're dealing with a normal good or an inferior good. Now the problem is that it's kind of hard to explicitly increase or decrease consumers' income. It'd be kind of mean to purposely experimentally decrease their income because you're basically stealing money from them. But you can think about how we, how we might do this in practice. One thing we could do is we could wait for consumers' income to increase or decrease on their own. We sort of have wait for some sort of natural experiment or something like that, where just nature is causing either good or bad economic times where people feel richer or poorer, and then see what happens to the demand for our product. Or we could be a little bit more creative where we could simulate in some way an increase in consumer income. So, for example, if we wanted to, experimentally speaking, we could just give some consumers some money and see whether they're buying more of our product or less of our product, right? So you can think about how this might work, but it all ties back to the fact that normal and inferior goods state the relationship between income and demand, which is separate from looking at the relationship between price and quantity demanded even though one of the components in a lower price is that on some level consumers feel richer, it's not one and the same. And you can see here that if we were to change the price of the goods, we would just be moving from one point to another. For example, if we were to lower the price, we'd just be moving from one point to another on the same demand curve, that this is what a change in price would do. Whereas 
when we're talking about a change in income, we're actually shifting the entire demand curve.